Hello. Okay, really quick. I wanted to show you all my shopping haul. I'm gonna add it to this video, the one you're watching right now. And I, I just didn't wanna have uh, decision fatigue all in one day. So I decided to go today because I have some time. I went to Ross and to Ulta. Are you focused on me? Oh, is this crooked? Hold on. Hey, with the new update, now I have straight videos. So let's go through Ulta first really quick. I got another exfoliant mitt because when I traveled with the one that I had, you could smell the bacteria basically. So I'm just like, I'm throwing it away. I'm not using that on my face. So I got a new one. Either way, I was supposed to get one pretty soon. My A, my, no, not A, H, A, uh, hyaluronic acid. I'm running low. So I'm gonna need that pretty soon. I got something else, where did it go? Did I drop it? Because that one was actually kind of expensive. Oh my god, I'm gonna be so sad if I dropped it. <gasps> no. Maybe it's in my car. I'm gonna get, go check after this. But I got the Mighty Patch. I like the pimple patches and I like to do nose strips, but I just like, I don't know. Every time I do a nose strip, I don't know if it's like damaging or something to like my skin barrier, whatever it is. I'm not a skincare guru. But I always break out even though like, I don't know, I always break out. Like I don't know if it gets infected or whatnot. Um, so I got this, it's a Mighty Patch. It's similar to the um, pimple patches, but I don't think it's necessarily meant for pimples. So I'm gonna try that. I'm really excited to try it. And then I got this for my heels because I don't know what is it, but suddenly like, I'm starting, I, I'm nervous that I'm gonna develop cracked heels. And you know, when I was younger, I'm just like, what even is that? And now that I'm getting older, I don't know if it's just, you know, getting older. I need to take care of that a little bit more. And it's honestly just my heels. Like the rest of my feet are fine. So I just got this one for the heels and I'm gonna get something at Walmart tomorrow to help um, moisturize that part of my feet. And then I got this lip tint if I or lip balm tint bomb i don't know if i find it i will put a clip here it first of all looks really cute like very aesthetic it's clear so it goes on and then it adjusts to the pink that looks best for your shade according to the review and when i swatched it it looked really really good it's like a corally pink so I'm, i was really excited and honestly it wasn't cheap i've been wanting like a lip stain i'm still on the hunt for a good lip stain so leave your recommendations so moving on to what i got at ross i got these nice killer boots i have these boots called my i don't want to cuss too much on camera my ethical boots which i bought when i turned 18 and got my now it wasn't my first job but i got like a, a job at that time and it was one of the first things i ever bought was like my own money and they were these forever 21 lace-up boots and i had them all the way to like literally a month ago when i threw them out because i'm just like they went through my whole college era i would take them out to every party i've thrown up on them i took them out to bars i took them out to concerts they were so comfortable because the heels were block heels and they look like witch boots honestly oh, i love those boots but they have been through it and you could tell they just look so worn out i'm just like you know what if i keep holding on to dear life to these boots i'm not gonna get new ones so i got these from ross like girl oh i don't know this makes me want to wear like a superhero costume for some reason they're cute hold on i'll put like a better clip <laughs> but look at this like I feel like I can conquer the world in these. They are so, and they're actually comfortable. <sighs> I'm glad I gave up the Forever 21 boots because if I would have seen this, I would have been like, no, I already have boots, I don't need them. Those were the end of an era. Honestly, Forever 21 can have some really good items. So you just need to know how to take care of them. And I'm not necessarily supportive of fast fashion, but I know that when you're in a pinch or you just don't have the money, like Forever 21 was expensive for me growing up like i was either thrifting had secondhand clothes like uh, hand-me-downs or what's the other one or we had these stores called like Fallas paredes or factory 2 which are like super super cheap clothes because we just could not afford it forever 21 was like an expensive brand for me and then like when i came to when i came to college like i splurged on forever 21 stuff because i had my own money and like i was only responsible for myself yeah and i it was kind of like sad to hear that people were like oh no it's fast fashion like it's not even good fashion it's not rich fashion 
fashion. Me growing up, not necessarily like poor, but we weren't, well, like we weren't rich either. We were like, we, we I grew up in a very loving family who provided as much as they could. And a lot of the times we just couldn't get wants. It was more of needs. And my parents did the best to like allow us for wants and like prioritize what we wanted rather than themselves. So I will always be very grateful for them. But Forever 21 was an expensive brand and I could only ever buy from the sales section. Yeah, that was a little tangent, a little rant, but Ross, girl, there was these other pair of boots. They were like $60 and they looked a lot like my Forever 21 boots, but these were just 20, 30, 30, they were 30. Those one, aside from the fact that again, like, I feel like I can kick ass with these. I got this cute little long sleeve. Again, I'm gonna put a clip of it right here or right here. Cute, cute. I just need a few more casual long sleeves, not, nothing too big. And then I'll try these on camera, but I got this like reversible jacket. I almost bought a jacket on Amazon, but then I remember that they had these. And look at this. I'm ready for this Washington weather, weather and it's reversible too, so light colors say less let's go baby and then i got this white cardigan because my dog literally chewed my other cardigan up i feel very preppy with this one actually it's not as oversized as i would have preferred it anyway this is already 10 minutes long and it's probably because of the tangent and i'm gonna keep it on i'm gonna go and i'm gonna go to my car really quick to see if i can find that lip balm we are in my bathroom today for no real reason except i am going to do a little bit of my makeup because today i am going to barnes and nobles i have no idea what kind of video this is going to be it originally was going to be a cute cozy fall day in my life go to the bookstore go thrifting and stuff like that but i went to walmart earlier today and i had some serious shoppers fatigue because i just decided to do my groceries at walmart and it was just it was a lot it was a lot where was i going with this oh yeah so i really don't know what kind of day we're gonna have today instead of what we're going to do is we're going to go to barnes and nobles because for sure i want to go to barnes and nobles and i'm going to do a little book review later we're going to get a matcha, an iced matcha latte, because I really want one. And if I am not too tired and if it's not too late, I'm going to go to the thrift store because it's like literally like right down the block or something like that. So we're going to do that. Earlier, I just had my hair clipped back. I think I'm going to do that again. Oh my God, look, my nail. Disgusting. They broke. It broke really, really bad. Like they're already short, but that one broke really bad. But just really quick, I want to look cute. I'm glad I didn't put on the makeup earlier like I had originally planned because I took a nap. Oh, let's read apply sunblock, even though it's like super cloudy. Sunblock can be an amazing type of primer, in my opinion. I don't know, I'm not a makeup guru. But depending on the, the sunscreen you use, it can really like help with your makeup because there's those tinted ones, there's the matte ones. This one's like a hydration one. So as you can see, it makes my skin look very dewy and nice. And I really like that. Okay. So I've been reading a bunch of books lately because when I was moving, I didn't have access to like any of my hobbies. So reading was just something that I was doing. So. I'm not going to do a book review for all of my books. I'm just going to do book reviews for the, my physical books that I have. Because if I did it for all of them, I don't think I remember all of the books I read. I should keep track of like a book log or something like that. We're like mid-October and I have not read my book club book. But I did read. I finished. I started a book and finished it uh, yesterday. So I read it in like two, three days. I did read some books from my TBR list and that was nice because I've had those books since June and I am finishing one right now. So I'm gonna go and get my book club book and then I joined another book club as if I wasn't already behind on my reading. That one's on an online book club though. It's not like we actually meet. I think there's just, it's a constant flow of communication basically unlike my actual book club that's more like my friend's book club that's more intimate because it's like literally just us going on zoom and then as if i wasn't already doing enough i also want to join the buildings book club because they have like they're really big on like community events and stuff like that i think i mentioned this already but they're really big on community events so they have a book club I haven't joined it because I don't know what kind of books they read and I originally had joined my friend's book club, 
book club because it would get me out of my comfort zone um, to read other books that were not just like thrillers and romance and it has so far that was my i guess a seven minute makeup because that's how long i've been recording what do we think it's cute i like it uh really quick i'll show y'all what my outfit looks like okay so i'm wearing the cardigan that i got yesterday cute little dainty earrings just a regular like sports bra my flare jeans and i'm gonna be wearing my filas and this is the outfit outfit of the day let's go buy books i am so excited i have not gone book shopping in a cool second let's go A reading vlog because I don't want to actually go to Goodwill. Shocker, I don't want to go to the thrift store, even though it would be nice. But I, I, I just want to go home and read. And I started reading in the Company of Witches, and I'm already hooked. But I haven't read, finished reading the current book that I'm reading, which is The Inheritance of Orgidia Divina. And I'm almost done. I'm pretty sure I can finish it within the next hour. Since I got my matcha towards the end, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hurry home, not drink my matcha, so then I can drink it at home while I finish my book. By the fireplace! Ah! Cozy vibes! Okay, let's go! this video in our little work office but i am not because this is the best lighting i will get today it's really gloomy it's really cozy i have a huge sweater sweater weather and i'm currently reading in the company of witches i'm really excited i need to speak louder because my mic's all the way over there okay so i wanted to give you all a book haul and a book review of what i've been reading the past few weeks months um i think the last book i gave a review for was crying in h mart and that was literally the first book we read for our book club i'll say spoilers just because i don't want to accidentally spoil something after saying i didn't i'm not going to try to give too much detail like i did for crying in h mart that one was a bit more of a memoir so it made more sense to talk a little bit more about it but these i feel like definitely like it's more you should read them and i also will not spoil the ending but again just in case something does slip out spoil it. so the first book i want to start off with is lonely castle in the mirror i think i gave it a 3.5 out of 5 or a 4 out of 5 i i'm gonna keep at 3.5 my rating might have changed but now that i'm reflecting on it um a little again once again a few months after reading it i think it's a 3.5 out of out of five i think it's a really good book it actually reminded me a lot of if you watch anime that one movie called your name it has the same kind of like magical concept and i literally could just see it play out in my head as an anime and i think there actually is a movie for it an animated movie for it but i don't think it was translated into english just yet this book it is translated into english but it's not originally uh what's it called an english book the reason why i gave it a 3.5 rather than a 4 because i think i changed my rating is because it did take maybe like half the book to actually get into like and the chapters were kind of long too because they go by months so it's whatever happened within that span of a month that it's a coming of age book i think 
it's a YA book I can't quite remember at least when I went to Barnes and Nobles it wasn't in the YA section it was just in the regular fiction section talk about a little bit more serious topics towards the end but just a quick synopsis of the story it's basically about this one girl I don't even remember what her name is Kokoros okay um, this one girl named Kokoro who she does not go to school she just physically physically can't go to school because something's just keeping her from going like she has anxiety about going to school and so one day while she's at home her mirror lights up and she walks through a mirror into a different I guess you can say dimension it's like a portal basically into a castle where she meets a bunch of other kids around her age there is a wishing room with the wishing key and whoever finds the wishing key can get a wish basically that's just what the story is about like these kids kind of a, a bit of a coming of age story like just like a power of friendship kind of situation and trying to find the key and stuff like that it is a really good book the twist there there's a few twists there and at least for me again just because i have watched quite a good amount of animes i feel like it was a little bit expected in that sense but there is one twist that really threw me off and it was i really enjoyed it but because it did take me like halfway through the book to actually get engaged into it to actually really enjoy it uh, i'm giving it a, a 3.5 so the other book that i read is you're not supposed to die tonight that's also uh, these two are for my my friend's book club so you're not supposed to die tonight it's also a ya book a young adult book i am rating that one two out of five just because for that one i actually really enjoyed reading it at first it is a very very cheesy like very much inspired kind of slasher filmed book and i was really enjoying it and i'm just like yeah like this is making me want to watch like nightmare on elm street and like you know just slasher movies in general and so i was okay with that you know i feel like if you want to be inspired by something like fully commit do it just go go with it i i will enjoy that because that's the thing you're going with so like i respect that like if that's not your taste and that's not your taste it was really easy to get into it was very engaging but i felt like the twist at the end was so unnecessary and it was just trying way way too much that it lost me and i no longer found it fun that one also has elements of magic and stuff like that and at least for me like the elements of magic did not have any kind of foundation or background it was just thrown in there so that that one really just kind of threw me off it didn't make sense that's what it was the plot twist did not make sense with what the book actually was i should probably give the synopsis at first I think that's what people do. You're not supposed to die tonight is, like I said, it's a young adult book. So the setting is teenagers and they are in this camp for the summer. It's not summer camp, like you send your kids to summer camp. It's more like a, what's it called? An attraction that's has a theme of a summer camp. And so it's these teenagers basically running a summer camp horror house they're reenacting a, a pretty like big slasher film that happened in their world and people go up there and like pay to get scared a haunted house but like it's a summer camp these teenagers basically run this like there's an adult present but like he's not present at all and when they're shutting camp what ends up happening is that someone turns up dead so like for them it's just like this was all fun and games this is this isn't real like it's not an actual slasher film why is someone turning up dead it's not a scary story it really is not not scary at all i think it's definitely more of a thriller up until that like those twists that were just unnecessary and i i did not enjoy but those were my two books for my friend's book club and right now the book that we're reading for october is in the company of witches which is part of my book haul so i got this book <laughs> and then i wanted to briefly talk about three other books that i read that were not part of the book club two of them i actually read and one of them was an audiobook the other book i read that was not part of my reading list for the month was siren queen i actually read these two books during this week yeah this week like i, I picked this up sometime like on monday or tuesday I finished this book I think in three days it, yeah it took me three days to finish it's not that big of a book but this book is called Siren Queen by oh I'm very sorry if I mispronounced this name um, Ni Nai Vo so the synopsis of this book the main character our protagonist she's a Chinese American girl 
uh, living in California basically it's a coming of age story for sure when this girl we don't know her name I don't think we actually ever learned her name but this girl when she was a kid she got her first acting gig and it was honestly the most humiliating acting gig that she would do because someone just saw her in the street with a dress that they thought did not look presentable and they said oh there's your beggar like she she's going to be a beggar so they asked her like you're perfect the way you are like do you like go on screen and you're going to beg for money and so this girl she got like irked about it like hey like you know why <laughs> like i didn't think i looked that bad you didn't even like change my clothes they started filming she actually started acting and they actually enjoyed the acting and that was her first um acting gig basically and from there she would come back to that same set to that same area to act, see if she can get like small little um, extra roles and so basically that story just follows her growing up into this hollywood um realm and it was a good book but it kept me confused <laughs> throughout the whole thing because like i said i wasn't sure if this was magical realism or if it was just straight up fantasy because there's just some stuff of the story where there are fantasy like aspects of it and you don't know if it's a metaphor because like we're talking about hollywood so a lot of people do like metaphorical comments about hollywood like being monsters and like people sell their lives for fame and stuff like that so i wasn't sure if it was a metaphor or if it actually like was happening if that's what was happening it's just stuff like that where i'm just like i have no idea what's real and what's not maybe i will reread it again in the future because i feel like maybe if i read it one more time i'll understand it a little bit better i'm gonna rate it a three out of five because i was really confused but because i was confused i just wanted to understand what was happening it kept me engaged in that sense so this is the inheritance of orquidea divina by Sordi so soraida Cordova. I started reading it on Friday and I finished it yesterday. It's an average size book in my opinion. I feel like books are normally this big. This book is engaging as soon as you start reading it. It's honestly really easy to get into. It's a pretty easy read also in my opinion. I'm for sure for sure at first I'm just like is this also another magical realism book? It is but it is straight up like you know that it's not a metaphor like it's actual magic so i guess it's more of fantasy because it's set in a world where there's not supposed to be any magic but like the family itself is magic anyway i'm getting ahead of myself and so the synopsis of this book is basically i constantly kept comparing it to encanto and i actually watched encanto last night after reading this book because it reminded me of like an adult version of encanto not because it was like spicy or anything like that like it's an adult version of encanto uh because the themes are a little bit more complex rather than like some like child stuff so basically there's this like matriarch family where the grandma Orquidea Divina Montoya is you know the head of the family and she had a bunch of kids she had five different husbands and she had kids with all of those husbands and ended up with a bunch of grandkids and stuff like that as well so it starts off with the grandma sending a letter out to all of her living relatives letting them to come back to the house because she's dying and they need to collect their inheritance this book takes place both in the present time of this era and it goes back and forth between back, um present and past at first i i was kind of like upset about it because i'm just like i feel like i'm reading encanto like what what is this but actually it, it kind of derails from it and it, it becomes its own thing it has I think maybe a somewhat predictable ending. The whole world of Orquidea and like who she is and how she became what she is is really interesting. Like that was really like what captured me. I'm going to rate this one four out of five. And then the last book I want to like quickly talk about. So I actually did not read that book. I listened to it because when I was driving up to Washington for our move, I decided I wanted to listen to a book to keep me entertained. Sarah J. Mass's books. I read A Court of Thorn and Roses and I really liked it. Crescent City series, um, House of Earth and Blood. And 
like I was saying, I wanted to read one of her books or listen to one of her books in my drive because I thought it would be an interesting book, basically. But I learned the hard way that you cannot read her, like you cannot just listen to her books. Like you need to actually be reading the book to be paying attention, not multitask. Like it, it, I, I did that for It Ends With Us and that one was easy to just listen to. Like I didn't really have to like think about it too much. But because there's so much world building in these books, like you can't just listen to it. You really have to be focused on it. And so that was my mistake. It was a really long audio book was going to give up on it i did not want to finish it and i actually it was going like i did not want to keep reading her books because of that because it took me i want to say maybe like a third at first i thought it was half the book but it might have been a third a third of the book to get into which meant my whole drive to washington and that was 11 hours of listening to a story that did not engage me at all it started off so slow it was not engaging there was too much world building but that one that now that I think about it, that again is on me. Yeah, I'm not getting into the synopsis. My rating for that one, I'm gonna say it's a 4 out of 5. Mm, 3 out of 5. If we put, compare it to A Court of Thorn and Roses, I think 3. Mm, I like the world building. I think it was interesting. It just took really, really, really long for me to get into. Unlike A Court of Thorn and Roses, which I got, in, like, I got into super quick. I could not put that book down also the ending it ended really nicely like i know like you know there's other books to it but i did not feel the need to start the second book right now so i'm actually gonna wait until like the um i think the third or fourth book i think it's the third book comes out so i can <laughs> i can read it i'm not left in a cliffhanger so i guess that's the good thing is that the first book is not really left in a intense cliffhanger where like you need to read what happens next okay yesterday barnes and nobles hall I want to show you all what I got. So as I said, I already I already showed you guys. I got in the company of Witches by Arlie Wallace. I just started reading it, but basically it's about this these witches that have a bed and breakfast and a client dies on them. So they're trying to like uncover like the murder mystery of it all. And then the other books I got, Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. This book has been in my reading list since I was in high school, but at least for me, I read so many series in high school. I read like all of the young adult series that were like out at that time. I just never picked this one up because I did not start getting into fantasy up until like of maybe a few years ago, like back in 2020 to 2021 i started finally getting into fantasy fantasy was not really my thing i was more into supernatural um series or uh dystopian series but fantasy i don't know i've just never really been into it my other book club book which by the way big shout out to i think her name is carla espinosa she actually inspired me to do a, a vlog like this i wasn't going to do a reading vlog it was going to be a regular vlog but then it just kind of turned into a book vlog slash reading vlog i joined her book club right now they're reading behind closed doors so this is a thriller and i do not know i did not read the synopsis i do not like reading synopsis for thrillers because i like to go in without knowing what's going to happen if not i am really good at guessing what happens the other book i got i don't know if they read it before this book i don't know if they read it last month or the month before but i got when in rome by sarah adams this seems to be a cute little rom-com small town vibes where like a pop star goes into a small town and like meets i think it's, he's a broody guy like dark broody or whatever and it's just a cute a cute romance come on like i can't have a whole month of reading without one romance book in there i mean i did we do some romance reading in my kindle when in rome is going to be my little break book romance books are really easy for me to get through and honestly sometimes they're not that memorable because they all kind of like mesh into one book sometimes so this is going to be my little break in between like other stuff the last book i got i finally caved mostly because the second book is going to come out in november but i got fourth wing i don't really know what this book is about but there's just so much hype they kept promoting it everywhere i saw i just know it's about dragons 
another fantasy book, I guess. Um, and it's another series that I guess I'm starting. Um, I hate starting series that are not completed because, you know, who, who likes to do that? I'm very, I'm a very impatient person and a lot of fantasy or this dopian sci-fi supernatural series that are finished now came out when I was in middle school and was reading them book by book so I know how difficult it is to wait until the next book comes out. But yeah, so basically this is what I got at Barnes & Noble. Very, very happy with my purchase. I think that's the end of this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'm gonna go make myself a comfy drink, have some breakfast, I haven't had anything to eat, and go read my book in this nice cozy sweater weather. Bye!